Hi, my name is Lexi Jong and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things, lipsticks. And if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that lip products are a weakness of mine, but I typically steer more towards the creamy satin finishes or a glossy finish. I don't typically dip my toe into matte finish products. However, I have recently been kind of trying out a few different ones such as the Patrick Ta, um, that's why she's late lipstick and I love that. I love the staying power on that. So I've found that a lot of the newer formulas, they're much better than they used to be the last time I really, you know, truly attempted to wear matte lipsticks. So I have decided to dip my toe in and I was also partially encouraged by my friend Sean at Sean K Beauty. So she wears matte lipsticks all the time. They look phenomenal on her. And, you know, I went to go and pick up a couple of the shades that she has worn in some of her looks on her channel and they were matte. So I decided to go ahead and try them out. Today's video will be in collaboration with Sean from Sean K Beauty. And I am so thankful to have met her here on YouTube. She is fantastic. If you're not familiar with her channel, please check her out. She's a chemist and she likes to bring science to beauty. And what that means is she really goes into detail about the ingredients in a product and how they work together to give you, for example, a particular finish that you like or how they'll interact on your skin, why certain ingredients are included. For example, we know a lot of people try to steer away from alcohol in products, but that's not always necessary because sometimes the alcohol actually facilitates you know, how that product is absorbed by your skin or how it interacts with other ingredients. So she tries to help explain all of that so you can get a better idea of what's gonna work for you in skincare and in makeup. She also does luxury beauty hauls and unboxings and things like that as well. So if you haven't checked her out yet, please do so. Let her know I sent you. And if you're here from Sean's channel, welcome and here, I like to focus on luxury makeup and typically I stay away from first impressions of something that's a new formula to me because I like to give it, you know, I like to give you guys my true opinion after I've kind of tried things out more than just once. Now, a new shade or something that's a little different, I can give a first impression of a color, but if it's a new formula to me, I do like to test it out and I also like to do, you know, updates on products after I've used them for a longer period of time because I think nowadays a lot of people are shopping online more and more and I personally, I, I personally don't like to return makeup. I think it's very wasteful and you know, sometimes, I know sometimes you just gotta return something, but hopefully we can all make good decisions where we can hopefully not have too many items to return. For today's video, Sean and I both actually picked up two of the same lipsticks, and these are gonna be the Givenchy Le Rouge Deep Velvet Lipsticks. And I know Sean recently did a video with some of her favorite lipsticks, and there, there was a particular color um, from this line that was on that list. And they recently released some new shades. So we both actually picked up the two same shades, and we're going to test those out. I'll give you guys my thoughts. I also have a all day wear test, so I will give you some updates on that. Let's start off with this product. So I purchased the shade 38 Granat Fumé, which is what is on my lips right now. And then the other one that I purchased is number 36 Lanter D, which is a bright red. The lipstick retails for $38. I picked mine up from Sephora, and this is supposed to have a 12 hour wear time, and it is considered a powdery matte lipstick. Some of the key features for this lipstick is that it's highly pigmented with a powdery matte finish. It includes mango butter to keep your lips moisturized and feel comfortable throughout the day, and it lasts up to 12 hours. The ultra powdery texture provides full coverage without weight, and this lipstick is made in France. Straight off the bat, when I saw these lipsticks, they reminded me of Lisa Aldridge lipsticks, and I do have quite a few of her lipsticks. I think I'm just missing one shade that sold out before I could get it a couple years ago, 
And that's what these reminded me of. So you can see that they do have that velvety look on the lips. And just like Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, they are very creamy and they don't truly dry down. So they will stay creamy and comfortable on the lips throughout the day. The Givenchy Le Rouge Deep Velvet Lipsticks come in this gorgeous red velvet case. I love the packaging. I think it is gorgeous. Personally, I love Givenchy lipstick packaging in general. They have recently gotten into the customizable case game and honestly, the cases that they have that you can buy separately, I'm not a fan of. Plus, I don't believe they actually have any refillable lipsticks for those. So you'd basically be exchanging a case that you already paid for with a lipstick. But I think that all of the lipsticks that they create for their lines, even for example, you know, like holiday lines and so forth, I think the cases that they have for those are always exceptional. And this is definitely not an exception. It is gorgeous. So we've got this beautiful deep red velvet. You have the Givenchy logo right down the center on a piece of metal. And then the lipstick tube is here. And you can see you've got the Givenchy logo imprinted on the front of the lipstick. This is the shade I have on my lips, number 38, Granat Fumé. And here's a single swipe of that. And if we were to build it up a little bit deeper, there you go. So you can see that with one swipe, you're getting pretty opaque coverage. The second shade I purchased is number 36, Lantardy. And this is a bright red. Go. Let me just build this up here. There we go. So you can see, again, it's pretty opaque with just one swipe. Looking at these shades, Lantardi number 36 is going to be a bright true red and it, it's not a cool tone red. It's pretty neutral, leaning slightly warm. Number 38, Granat Fumé is really a, you know, burgundy grape. So it's more of a plum berry shade and there's definitely a hint of purple in there and it's gonna be a bit cooler toned. Application of these lipsticks is really nice. They go on smoothly. They don't pick up on any dry parts of your lips. I have found that with these lipsticks, I do not need to exfoliate beforehand. Obviously, anytime you exfoliate your lipstick, your lips before applying any sort of lip product, it will look a little bit better, but this does not adhere to any of the dry patches on my lips at all. So, you know, it's not, it's not necessary. Now, a lip pencil is also not required with this formula. It's always a nice touch, but I don't have one on today, and I also did not wear one in the wear test that I will show you. So, you know, take it or leave it. Lip brush will allow you to get a more precise application, and it also, you know, you can, if you want this to be a little bit lighter, a little less opaque, applying it with the lip brush, you, if you do a lighter coating, obviously you're going to have more of that stain on your lips instead of an actual opaque lipstick. I applied this one straight with the bullet and I feel like the application of this was pretty spot on. You know, I didn't create a mess and honestly, when I did the look for the wear test my mess uh, my application for that was pretty messy but one of the things i like about this formula is it's creamy enough that and it doesn't really like it'll leave a stain on your lips after a while you know like any lipstick does but it doesn't stain the skin surrounding your lips so when i made a little mess on the actual skin i was able to wipe it off with my fingers and i wasn't left with any like red pigment on my skin there so i think that was definitely a plus I'm gonna move in a bit closer so you can see this color on my lips a little bit better. And then if you're interested in seeing shade number 36, that will be at the beginning of the wear test, I will have a fresh application of that one. So you can see it's definitely a burgundy plum shade. There's a touch of purple, which helps make it a little bit cooler tone but it's not gonna be straight purple. You definitely have that reddish undertone to it. And I think it makes the shade a little bit more wearable for more people. Before we move into my thoughts on this lipstick, let's do a quick comparison 
with some Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. Now, Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, they retail for approximately the same price. I believe it's 26 pounds, but with the US conversion, that's about $35 right now. And so it's gonna be similar. The Lisa Eldridge lipsticks are also a creamy hydrating matte and they have a slight sheen to them. They're not a flat matte and I feel like the Givenchy are also not a flat matte. You can see a little bit of a satin sheen to them as well. And that's one of the reasons I like them. And that's also the feature that made me think of the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks in comparison with these. They are long wearing, not drying, and they are cruelty free. And they have a true velvet surface to the actual lipsticks. So let's look at a few swatches here. So I pulled the ones that I think are most similar to these shades. This one here is Velvet Mid. And one of the things, you know, it's just her bullets are, are gorgeous. So the Lisa Eldridge, they are in a brushed gold case. It's magnetic. And then the actual side of the lipstick bullet looks like velvet fabric. So this one here is Velvet Myth. I'm gonna put this right here so you can see that. These are not gonna be quite as opaque in one swipe as the Givenchy, but pretty close to it. And you can see that Velvet Myth here is going to be just a little bit more red than the Givenchy Granat Fumé. This here is Velvet Midnight. And this is going to be more purple. So that's right here, and that's gonna be pretty close. And I feel like the Givenchy shade is kind of a mix of these two. For the red, the Lanter D from Givenchy, this is Velvet Ribbon, which is probably the most popular Lisa Eldridge shade. And this is the only one that I have that look to be similar, but you can see that this one is gonna be a bit more of a cooler tone red compared to the Givenchy. Velvet Morning here is slightly warmer and we'll put that one right here. And this one is gonna be a little bit more orangey red compared to Velvet Ribbon. And again, I feel like the combination of Velvet Morning and Velvet Ribbon kind of equals the Givenchy Lanterdi shade. So up until now, the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks were pretty much the only matte lipstick I really enjoyed wearing. As I mentioned, the Patrick Ta lipstick, I really love the way that one performs, but that one dries down to like a true matte, and you know, like more of a dry finish on your lips. It really lasts all day, but it also dries out my lips a little bit. So the Lisa Eldridge ones were the only ones that I have found. Again, I, I didn't try a ton of matte lipsticks prior to now, but those were really the only ones I found that stayed hydrating on my lips and did not dry them down. However, I do notice that it is much better to have a smooth lip surface before applying those than is necessary with the Givenchy. So the Givenchy wins in that case. Now my overall thoughts on the Givenchy matte lipsticks, I really like them and I'm definitely interested in trying more of these. I like the way they feel on my lips. When I first started wearing them, I was a little unsure. And by the way, I have worn these five times now, so I wanted to give them a true test. So I've definitely been experimenting with them. And when you put these on, they are basically advertising this powdery finish. And for me, when I put them on, they feel creamy like a satin lipstick for quite a while. So you've got at least an hour to two hours where you're feeling that thick, creamy texture on your lips. And then as that texture starts to fade, you do feel more of that powdery finish. And the pigmentation really does last very well throughout the day. So the wear test that I did is for eight hours and you know, I wouldn't say that it's 12 hour wear. I would say somewhere between six and eight hours. And that's obviously gonna be with normal daily activities, you know, eating and drinking and so forth. So obviously if you are, like when I, <laughs> when I was going to work, I, would, I wouldn't really eat during the day. I was one of those people, I would just get so focused 
and I would just kind of power through the whole day without really eating or drinking much. Yeah, the lipsticks would last 12 hours in that situation for me, but on a regular every day, you know, with normal activities, I'd give it between six and eight hours for, you know, nice coverage. The Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, on the other hand, have slightly less lasting time on me than the Givenchy do. However, you know, both of them are very easy to apply. And one of the things I like about the Lisa Eldridge is they actually are not as opaque as the Givenchy. So if you are a little bit afraid of the color in the tube and you apply it with a lip brush, you're definitely going to get more of a light stain. Whereas the Givenchy, you will get a lighter stain than the actual lip color with a lip brush, but it's not going to be as reduced as it is with the Lisa Eldridge. So, you know, in that sense, the Lisa Eldridge can be a little bit more versatile if you're somebody who is afraid of deeper, vibrant colors. They're much more easy to kind of tone down. Now, as I mentioned with these lipsticks, you have that thick, creamy feeling for quite a while on your lips. And these lipsticks are not transfer proof and neither are the Lisa Eldridge, by the way. So when you are eating and drinking, you know, you touch your, your lips, you are getting lipstick coming off every time, even when it looks like it's really faded down a lot. One of the things you can do to reduce that, if you would like a shinier lip, apply a clear lip gloss on top. And then a lot of the transfer is actually gonna be that clear lip gloss instead. So your color will last a little bit longer, but again, you're gonna lose that matte look. What they need to create is a matte looking lip gloss that really prolongs the life of lipsticks. I think that would be a really cool product. One of the features I really like about these Givenchy lipsticks is actually that creaminess that you get upon application and the fact that that really remains so long. So the Givenchy lipsticks, you know, they are advertising that powdery matte finish, but I feel like they need to actually focus a little bit more on how creamy it feels in the beginning. And although you feel a little bit of a powdery finish in that, in that creamy texture, it's definitely not dry feeling. And for me, when I hear powdery matte finish, my first thought always goes to dryness on the lips. And the other feature I like the most about these lipsticks, aside from color selection, uh, is actually the fact that they do not accentuate dryness on the lips and they don't dry my lips out. So I have definitely been testing these out to see whether or not my lips get you know a little bit worse after wearing these frequently, and they do not. Uh, I would actually say they stay in exactly the same, you know, condition that they are when I started. They're not more moisturized <laughs> or less. So I think that's a good thing. That's really all you can ask for with a highly pigmented product like this. The fact that they don't accentuate dryness that I already have makes them much more wearable for me all year because like many people during the cooler months, my lips get very dry and chapped quite easily. And I do like to wear lip balm. Sometimes I'll wear lip balm under lipsticks and that can sometimes affect the matte finish, which is another reason that I have typically strayed away from matte finished products. And I feel like with these particular lipsticks, that's not necessary. As a matter of fact, I did try these out with balm underneath they go on nicely. That smooth, creamy texture on your lips stays a little bit longer. They look a little bit shinier than they do matte, but you can still tell that it's a matte product. So by the way, the amount of lip balm I had on was just like a light coating. Let me just show you transfer. This is just a microfiber cloth that I use to wipe my makeup brushes on, but let me show you how much this will transfer. So just a typical amount. And if you'd really like to reduce the transfer on this product, obviously just blot your lips in the beginning. I don't think the, the wear time is going to be quite as long that way, but it does kind of help reduce any transfer. Another thing I've noticed is I haven't really had issues with getting this product on my teeth, which can sometimes happen, particularly with bright red lipsticks. You know, it's always so noticeable then. But this one, you know, even though it transfers to like everything, um, I haven't had an issue with my teeth at all. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the wear test and shade number 36, Lance Hardy, and then meet me back here and we'll follow up. Today we're gonna to be testing out one of the Givenchy Le Rouge Deep Velvet Lipsticks. This is shade 36, Lanterdi, and it comes in this gorgeous red velvet case. And here we go. So we're gonna be doing a wear test with this shade. I'm gonna apply it directly from the bullet. All right, so the application isn't perfect, but we're gonna go ahead and see how this wears throughout the day without any sort of lip liner or anything underneath. This is the shade Up Close, and it feels very creamy on the lips. I have actually worn one of these already for a day, and they don't dry down on the lips. They stay creamy feeling like you would expect more of a satin lipstick. So they still have that lipstick texture to them. And I think that's one of the things that makes it very comfortable on the lips. So we're gonna go ahead and do a wear test and we'll see how this lasts throughout the day. It has now been two hours since I applied the Givenchy lipstick and it has finally dried down to that powdery matte. I ate lunch and there is a lot of transfer. So for example, I, well, I had some chocolate chips and I was putting a chocolate chip in my mouth, red lipstick all over my fingers. I didn't even realize I had touched my lips. So it's definitely very messy. I uh, got it on my sandwich when I was eating. So there's definitely plenty of transfer. However, you can see that the opacity of the color is still very strong. So it does feel you know dry to the touch now i do get a little bit of transfer still though so it's definitely not going to be something that is transfer resistant okay. i'm just gonna move in a little closer so you can see the lipstick and you can see that the color is still really strong i don't have any bleeding or anything no feathering going on with the lipstick and it still looks pretty much it, true to the shade that I had when I first applied. You can see like in the corners, it's starting to wear down a little bit. It's a little bit lighter there. But other than that, it's held up pretty well so far. Again, it has been two hours and I had one meal and a granola bar. It has now been six hours since I applied the lipstick and I finished dinner. I've been drinking from my water bottle all day and you can see it's definitely worn in you know this general area texturally it feels you know that dry powdery matte feeling now um you know all of the creamy texture from the beginning is at this point worn off so it's really more of a stain on my lips now and still get a little bit of transfer It has now been eight hours since I originally applied the lipstick and I've had lunch, dinner, dessert, <laughs> snacks throughout the day, been drinking uh, water. And you can see that basically it looks like more like a lip pencil application at this point. So I have the red you know, line around my lips and then it fades in and the center it is pretty pretty much absent. It's, it's still a little there, but not too much. And as for the texture on my lips, it is, I don't notice it. Uh, when I rub my lips together, it still feels like a little powdery maybe, but you know, honestly, it's not really there. The good thing is, although I feel like my lips feel dry when I rub them together, they don't feel like they've been dried out. So we'll see for sure after I take it off and what my lips feel like then and in the morning, but so far so good. This is gonna be my last check-in, thanks. I hope that was helpful. And if you have tried these lipsticks, I would love to know what your thoughts are on them. I really didn't know how much I would like them since you know matte lipsticks are not my thing usually, but I was 
pleasantly surprised and I think they're pretty com comparable to Lisa Eldridge. I think one of the main differences between the two of them are going to be the undertones. Lisa Eldridge really likes to have more of a mix of pigments to create unique nuanced undertones that work well for a variety of skin tones. So a lot of people can pull off the same color very well. And I think the Givenchy, you know, they definitely lean more cool or more warm and so forth. And maybe there aren't quite so many nuances to the shade. However, they have a very good shade selection. So there's something there for everybody. And I picked two of the deep colors, but they also have, you know, lighter nude shades and so forth as well. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time I post a new video. My schedule may be changing on videos now with online schooling starting on Mondays. So, you know, hit that notification bell if you haven't already. And please check out Sean from Sean K Beauty. Check out her review of these lipsticks, see what she thinks. She's very familiar with a lot of matte lip products, so she will definitely have a good comparison. And she's gonna be featuring the Chanel matte lipsticks as a comparison instead of the Lisa Eldridge. So if you have interest in either of those, definitely check out her video and check out her channel while you're there as well and hit that subscribe button. Sean will be pumping out a lot of videos very soon and one of the things that I really love about her channel is how she brings the science behind everything and really explains you know how things work synergistically and why things are included what a bad ingredient actually is and so forth so she really helps you make informed decisions thank you so much for joining us today and I hope you had a great time because I certainly did. And thank you so much, and I hope to see you in my next video. Have a great day, stay safe and healthy.